I just feel like I'm almost a bit of a magpie. I like shiny metal bits. <laughs> My name is Scott Osborne and I drive a 1973 BMW 2002 TII. buying a BMW 2002 TII after searching for you know cars of that general era um, you know I'd looked at um, Alfa Romeo sort of 105 series that sort of thing I'd always sort of had these in the back of my mind but almost forgotten about them so when I'd started searching you know websites and whatnot and seeing them it sort of sparked that off again um, and, and just started looking um, and realized there was more out there than I actually thought you know sort of came across this one by putting up a wanted ad on um, you know, a 2002 forum and someone had messaged me saying you know, I might be selling this soon, would you be interested? So, yeah, and the rest is history. Some of the big problems and the bits to fix when I first got it, it, it didn't have an engine in it um, and it didn't have a gearbox in it. So I had to, it, it came with some engine parts, it came with a, a block ahead, a few other bits and bobs, and it did come with a gearbox. Um, but they all needed running through building and it didn't have any sort of injection system on it No carbs, no anything. So, you know, I had to decide what I was going to do for that side of things as well And it, it just became a bit of a can of worms You know, once I got it home and got it up in the air and saw everything else that that was just the start of it really and I thought well I'll, I'll almost do it once and do it right even though it's still a rolling project today, you know, I still class it as one um, and I guess I'll be developing it for a long time yet. I do do a lot of work myself. I've helped out at competition engine builders, you know, since I was, uh, you know, about 14. They've done all the machining on it and the head modifications. And then I've brought it all back into this garage and, you know, sort of gone to town making sure everything's you know perfectly balanced and you know everything's immaculately clean and, and put it together in this garage so it was always a bit of um, you know an anxiety in my head that it's the first full engine I've ever put together um, you know what what better one to do than your own so it, yeah but it, it, seem, it seems to work very well you know it, it made more power than we thought it would um, the engine ended up making just under 180 horsepower, basically, and I think the torque figure was around 160 foot-pounds. So, you know, it, it's not going to set your trousers on fire, but you know, for an iron 50-year-old car um, th that weighs, you know, 970 odd kilograms, it, it, it goes okay. I mean, the standard engine should only rev to 58. This does seven and a half thousand. And you know, with the setup and everything else underneath, you don't really have to slow down. Once you, you know, you're up to speed, um, you just tip it in and it goes round. You know, it's it's turned out really well. It's a really strange car to uh, describe how it makes you feel when you're driving it. Um, you know, it just makes you smile, basically. Not nothing else to it. You know, I, I've never got out of this car and done anything other than smile. And uh, you know, it makes a lot of other people smile too. The big thing for me is part of the build as well. Noise is really, really important. Um, you know, it, that helps add to the feeling of what you're driving. For me, um, you know, so it, it always had to be on throttle bodies or um, you know on carbs or something of that description. Um, but I did intend to drive the car and drive it quite hard and go on road trips in it. Um, you know, so the, the throttle body just made complete sense. It means I can go far away from home and not worry about whether it's going to start when it's hot or even start from cold the, the day after a hard drive. You know, recently been to um, the Nürburgring over in Germany in it. And, you know, it, 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 it got there and back, absolutely no problems whatsoever. Um, you know, checked the oil a couple of times, um, but otherwise didn't 
put a spanner to it or do anything whatsoever. And that was always the end goal really, to build a car in my little garage and drive it over to the Nürburgring and do a few laps. You know, get the get the famous shots on the carousel. Um, you know, and, and it's something I can always look back on to say, you know, I've built built that engine, built that car. I've driven it over there and, and, and done some laps. So you know, it's fantastic that it made it over there. In terms of parts on this car that are maybe you know a little bit maybe one-offs the suspension that's been made by a, a uk company you know that are really highly regarded and i believe it's the only kit that they've done for this car and that was one thing you know I, I really like a car to you know stick to the road well you know be compliant basically and um, th these guys have hit the nail on the head um other you know special type um standout parts you know maybe maybe the gearbox it is an original 2002 gearbox, but it's the rare optional dogleg five speed. So quite a lot of people think the E30 M3 with its dogleg first, you know, that was the first kind of BMW to have that type of gearbox, but there's been quite a few before it um, that, that have, and you know, that's, that's one of them. One other thing that's hard on these cars to get right is um, the exhaust manifold. So on right hand drive cars, the steering box is right in the way of where the manifold would be so it always ends up being a, a you know a restrictive part of you know getting power out of these and the guys i took it to um, up towards newcastle built me an exhaust designed and built it to sort of be a halfway house between this engine and the potential future one and um, th that really is you know a work of art and really really happy with it you know it doesn't catch anything it's close to everything but it doesn't catch anything which is really important and Perhaps it's slightly oversized for this engine, so it's maybe lost a little bit lower down, but when it really comes on cam, you can sort of feel it, shouldn't you, forwards. In terms of handling um, and the way it puts the power down, you know, it's not leery at all. You know, it, it's grip and go, which is what I wanted. And some people will say, oh, that's a bit boring, you know, and they'll imagine Mark to Escort with the back end out everywhere all the time. Uh, but that's not what I wanted because I probably wouldn't be on the road for very long uh, you know it looks good in pictures and that sort of thing but you know in terms of you know really driving a car um, I wanted it to have you know as much grip as possible uh, and you know with zero driver aids I, I, I didn't really want the back end stepping out um, if, if I could help it with this car is um, you know BMW Classic offer a service where you can email them the VIN number and they'll get back to you you know it's manufacturer date it's delivery date and where it was delivered to paint color that sort of thing so I wrote off to them all straight away with the VIN number and they, and they came back and said it was delivered to an RAF base in Germany Wildenrath it was called I thought well, that, that's strange um, you know and it is a 1973 car but the registration marker on on it, you know, point makes it like a 74. So, you know, it spent that first year of its life in, in Germany. And I just thought, you know, I was curious if it was anywhere near the Nürburgring. I thought, has it been around before? Um, so that's like the little fancy in my head that, you know, when this car was new, um, you know, it, that it's, it's done at least one lap of, you know, the Nürburgring already. And a couple of months back, you know, I, I almost just, took it back there. I found over the years, you know, forums have almost died a death. Specific forums or just other general ones, but Pissonhead seems to, you know, remain strong. And there's such a, a diverse type of petrol head on that forum. It just seemed at the right place to document it. The comments and the, the sort of feedback and the interaction with the guys on the forum. Um, it, it's always been, you know, really positive and really good. It's worth putting the time in to, to keep it up to date. Um, I mean, especially if you've had sort of like a hard few weeks on it, you sort of documented it and you post up and you think, you know, that was hard work. 
you know I've got through these problems but you know I'm, I'm there with it now and then just to get a few positive comments to to keep the spirits up to then go back in and crack on with it you know the next time it, it, it really does help If you want to check out my reader's car thread in full, why don't you hit the link in the description um, and whilst you're there you could start your own.